Hi, I'm Jay Mendez Napier, the author of White Horse Red Blood. It's my debut novel and the first book in the series 39 Sketches. I'm an artist, and it just so happens that my main character is an artist who carries his sketchbook around with him all the time. You're going to find those images throughout, but I want to even go further and just connect every single thing to art, even to the chapter numbers. So what I've done is put together every single thing that I could find that seemed relevant to the story itself, and it's probably the best way I've been able to kind of express the origin story for White Horse Red Blood, as seen through cover art to the sketches themselves. I hope you appreciate and enjoy the visuals of White Horse Red Blood. A good friend and colleague of mine, Jessica Ketchum, drew this for me. She recognized my affinity for horses, and specifically white horse. Kind of, I don't know, borrowed, stolen, modified. Let's call it modification. This is my original cover art design, uh, an oil painting. It's a little detailed for the taste of a cover. So I went through a few different versions of what that could look like. Uh, simplified, minimalist, and the original cover was going to be blue. It mimics the color of the jacket of the TRA agent, but red pops. The blue water it might seem a little odd, but it completely still works and holds on to the blue color scheme. Now, of course, I went ahead and took that original white horse uh, emblem and remodified it. This is something that we would see in the book from our character, Savior, who is a graffiti artist. Of course, I continue to modify it, I'm really liking it, uh, turning it into my own personal logo, which has my old personal logo connected to it, my signature, and a pop of color. You'll see this on the spine of the book. It stands in as my publishing logo now. Now, for the interior and the characters. Emily Mitchell and her river rock eyes. If you're ever wondering what that looks like, here's a pretty good example. She has a look, a vibe, obviously. She's younger, and one of the first times we actually see her and connect with her is when Bryant is dreaming. Bryant Paul, my main character, dreams and usually constructs and builds his own dreams the way he wants. And every once in a while, he's led into a place that is not necessarily his. In that dream, he sees the graffiti art tag of Mediterranean Real, or Mi Real for short which literally means the Mediterranean royalty, and therefore the royalty also for short, AKA. In his dream, he is being pursued, stalked by what looks to be a demon. It was a dog, it's no longer a dog. Emily is there briefly, and it is the first time we get a sense of who she is and who Bryant is while in the midst of a dream that he does not control. This is the airport scene in chapter three. Fortunately or unfortunately for Bryant, he happens to be in a lot of dreams that he hasn't been able to control lately. It's kind of the foundation of how he's making his move forward. He's no longer sitting in one place. Well, he's got a couple options. One of them is he just had a neuroprosthetic implanted into his brain that gives him the ability potentially to speak of the future, something he's hoping for. While at the Institute after a surgery, he's dreaming once again, and the dream of the five horses takes place. It's actually a thought process of mine that Five Horses would be a series title, but it's a little too basic. The motivation from this dream gets him moving, but it's really not discussed in book one. It is further investigated in book two. After having this dream, Everything connects. He's able to speak using his digital technology that's been embedded in his head. Once again, he lost the ability to speak. It's not really discussed too much as to why he can't, but 
this image was drawn specifically to show his language processing and how it worked. Which brings us to, well, travel. Travel is a huge part of White Horse Red Blood. It's a huge part of my life, at least I'd like it to be. And the idea of traveling to space sounds pretty fantastic. Once Bryant makes his move, he lands in Barcelona, Spain. And right now he's on Las Ramblas, and it's our first opportunity to see him gauge with the public. He's not the most social person, and when he is speaking to people, he's a little rough around the edges. Kind of like his sketches. Again, the sketch in itself is designed to be unfinished, incomplete, rough around the edges. There's opportunity for it to be better, but there's also something important or alive or in this sketch. It just seems to work. Which brings us to Savior. That's correct. That's how you pronounce that. Savior. He is a street artist, a felon. He's kind of a guy who just moves through life and enjoying every second of it. It's pretty fun. His character is definitely not one who is concerned with other. He is more a self-preservationist. And this is the first drawing that we see Bryant create that's not actually his, but someone else's. And so he is recreating what has been painted on the wall in Savior's Loft. It's actually one of my favorite sketches. There's something about it that, um, I don't know, it has layers. It's one of the things I really appreciate about art is the ability to kind of come back to it and just keep looking at it over and over and over again. You're always finding something new whenever it's done well, having those layers built into it. Bryant is traveling, moving once again. We found our way into Rome and If you don't know what this is, it's just a lot of burning trash, and specifically on cars. Cars have been set up as altars, and trash has been dumped onto it. Moving us into Piazza dei Mercanti, a nice little quiet square. Well, it's in Trastevere. Trastevere is the same locale which we found the burning altars. Bringing us to the final image. So if you've made it this far, you must be really interested in either have read my book or you want to read my book. And I just want to say thank you for that and offer if like, hey, you got a podcast, I would love to be a guest. Or maybe you're doing a book club. We can Zoom. I love the idea of answering questions as a teacher. It's what I do every single day. And I would totally um, love to have that opportunity to share more about the story. Well, that brings us to the end of White Horse Red Blood, all of the visuals from book one of the 39 sketches series. Just wanted to thank you so much for your time. If you're not a review writer, maybe you just throw some stars at me. If you've read the book, you can do that at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or at Goodreads. If you haven't read it yet, you can purchase it from any of those places, as well as an ebook. Um, paperback, hardcover. Somebody asks about the audio. I'm going to go ahead and finish the audio when all three books in the series are completed. Book two is actually very well on its way, and I can't wait to get more of this out to you soon. So thank you again for all of your support, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you again. If you need to find me, you can look me up at Jay Mendez Napier pretty much anywhere on the web and social media.